The best of Samsung takes on the best of Apple. One UI 5.0 versus iOS 16. It's 2022 and these operating systems have grown so much. While there are similarities like both using navigation bar to get around, app drawers, stackable widgets, privacy indicators, battery percentage finally, but they still do a lot of things differently which makes one better than the other in those areas. Let's start with lock screen and before we talk about the new iOS 16 lock screen revolution, it's still yet to offer one of Samsung's prime features which is the always on screen. The always on screen lets you see some important information like notification, time, and weather without even unlocking the phone. We've heard that Apple is also working on always on mode, but it's gonna be exclusive to the iPhone 14 Pro only. All right, let's jump to the actual lock screen. Now, One UI 5.0 doesn't really bring anything new in this area, while iOS 16 has a completely new look. iOS 16 offers incredible customization with endless possibilities. It has so much depth and so much dynamics. The reason why this is so good is because Apple's implementation is really fun and easy to implement with just a few clicks. You can choose from simple colors to iconic collections. The super popular and my personal favorite the emoji lock screen customization which looks incredible it allows you to set your favorite emojis have different type of grid looks depending on your taste so you can choose from small medium large and on top of that you can set and choose your favorite color for the background along with this customization ios 16 also introduced lock screen widgets which also looks really clean ios 16 also has a lock screen theme that is completely based on the weather and the conditions around you for your location and it's also one of my favorites the subtle depth detail when you pick a certain image and the timer actually goes behind the subject it looks incredible now let's take a look at what one ui 5.0 lock screen offers so first up we do have dynamic lock screen which basically shuffles through different photos based on the categories that you have chosen so you can have fresh look every time you lock and unlock your phone it looks kind of clean on ios 16 you can see the widgets on top while on the one ui 5.0 if you tap on the timer it basically expands and give you the full widgets look both have two quick shortcuts but on samsung you can actually customize and pick whatever app you want as your lock screen shortcut overall i prefer the lock screen look of the ios 16 compared to the one ui 5.0 but let me know what you think about it in the comment section below now taking a look at the lock screen notification you can see that on ios 16 everything sort of expands and you can just swipe like this it's actually looking pretty decent now on one year 5.0 you have these small notification icons and if you tap on them it kind of expands and if you tap on them again it basically brings down the whole uh, notification panel along with the full uh, notifications as well so you can check them out and both ios 16 and android bundle notifications to give you a cleaner look and in my opinion both of them do a pretty good job but i feel like android has a bit of a more cleaner look again let me know what you think about it in the comment section below now taking a look at the home screens you can see that even after all the years both operating systems systems have their own iconic look intact. Both offer home screen pages and both offers app drawers with a search bar on top. Uh, this one has a slightly different implementation as it makes up the folders automatically while here you have the apps just scattered outside and of course you have the ability to make your folders as well. I definitely prefer Android's app drawer over the iOS app library. Now in terms of the home screen customization, iOS is still very restricted in a lot of ways like you can move icons around, you can also pick up different icons together and move them at once which is very very nice but you still cannot place icons individually on your desired location like you can do on android and this is like pure freedom one year 5.0 also allows you to select a bunch of different icons at the same time and move them around you can remove them from your home screen or you can place them in a folder or you can uninstall multiple apps at the same time now that's not it one year 5.0 also lets you customize the home screen grid as well as app grid so you can basically have a expanded desktop look or a bit of a zoomed in look depending on whatever you prefer you can also hide applications from your home screen and your app drawer which is something that ios still doesn't offer by default so uh, definitely when it comes to the home screen and home screen customization and home screen freedom one ui 5.0 has the upper hand now ios 16 still doesn't offer a full-fledged theme engine which is again a full-on customization of the phone you can pick up any theme you want and once you apply this the whole look of the phone is changed not just your wallpaper but your app icons and your quick toggles as well the theme is also applied to the ui accents like you can see the touch color it has changed to orange you can also see the orange look for the scroll bar you can also notice the change in these toggles as well while i love what apple has done with the ios 16 lock screen there's still no easy official way to change the icons or change the whole ui accent that you can do with just a few taps by just applying a theme on samsung one ui 5.0 now with the one ui 5.0 you get something called color palette which basically applies a color scheme throughout the ui and based on the wallpaper that you have you can choose from up to 16 colors once you select 
select your favorite color, just hit apply. Once again, it will be applied to the icons as well as throughout the UI accent. Now, the things that you love about One UI is that how it utilizes the full on screen real estate. Like I can actually bring down the full notification panel as well as the full toggles without even reaching all the way to the top. While here on iOS, I can't really do that easily. I would have to take my thumb here and perform that special swipe to bring these options down. And sometimes I'm not able to do it properly because, you know, it's not a lot of space here. And this is just one swipe example. If you go to any application on One UI 5.0, for example, settings, it is designed for your full one hand usage experience. Even with iOS 16, I feel like Apple is not utilizing the max screen to its full potential. Now taking a look at the quick toggles on both of the UIs, you can see both of them have their own unique look. I love how these small icons react to the increase of brightness or volume, similar to how it is on One UI 5.0 if you notice this icon. And if you go too much, it turns red. So I think I like both. It's just going to come down to personal preference. Now what I don't like about One UI 5.0 is the animations. When it comes to animations, iOS is still the king. If I have to describe the animations on One UI 5.0 in one word, it would be called stiff. Unlike iOS, where we have this smooth animation for the opening and closing of app, you can see even with the camera, it is so fluid. And mind you, this is not even the latest iPhone. This is the iPhone 12 Pro Max, and still the iOS 16 beta looks incredible. While here, you can just tell that it's not as clinky. You can see, especially with the camera, you notice that there's a bit of a lag there. And you press it, you have to wait a few seconds. Even when I'm not launching camera, it doesn't feel as smooth, as fluid like iOS. So like I said, the best word to describe the animations on One UI 5.0 is stiff. It needs some serious optimization and hopefully with the final version, we're going to see some improvement. Now, this is just a Samsung issue because on the Pixel 6 with the Android 13, the animations are looking incredibly butter. Not just with simple app opening animations, but also with third-party apps such as Twitter, where you can see that it has a notably smooth scrolling animation compared to the One UI 5.0. Now, speaking of third-party applications, once again, you can see the lag that we get on Twitter for Android is so much noticeable, while here on iOS, it is just incredibly smooth. Now again, this is specific to the Twitter application. It's not directly Samsung's fault, but it does make you think that it is working completely fine on the Pixel 6 with Android 13, then why not Samsung's One UI 5.0? Now other applications look fine. You can see that the animation is pretty good, but occasionally I still see a slight hiccup when I go into the gallery to select uh, any photo. Based on what I've shown you with the example of Twitter and Instagram, we can easily come to the conclusion that iOS has better and smoother and more polished application experience still even in 2022 do compared to Android. Once again, I really hope Samsung realizes that they have to reach out to these third-party manufacturers to optimize this app experience when we get the official One UI 5.0 public update. Now let's quickly talk about multitasking. Now on iOS, you still don't get true multitasking that you can get with the One UI 5.0 and it's now even better. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some special features of both One UI 5.0 and iOS 16. Starting with iOS 16, one of my favorite special features on this is Image Extract. This lets you pick up your subject from any photo and have a clean cutout. It literally does that in seconds and you can just keep holding on to it and open any application and just quickly drop it. And now you can see it's on my message tab and I can just easily send it. Now with One UI 5.0, we finally get the ability to extract text from your photo. So you can copy text from any image in your gallery. Uh, this is similar to how we had on iOS since iOS 14, I believe. And now you can do it with videos as well. Now both operating system lets you hide images in your gallery, but on iOS 16, in order to access the hidden images, it will require face ID or passcode, which is something that we don't have on the gallery on the One UI 5.0. iOS 16 also introduced this powerful personalized spatial audio feature which basically uses your iPhone to scan your ears in real time based on your environment to create an improved spatial audio experience just for you. With iOS 16, you get a live built-in translate feature within the camera application so you can point this ad at any text and translate it to any language. Now taking a look at the special features of the One UI 5.0 starting with remaster pictures. So this actually lets you remaster any picture that you have in your gallery and it adds a considerable amount of detail and gets rid of the noise. It does take a few seconds though so you have to be patient and once it's done you can actually see the full before and after. So yeah, I definitely look much sharper with this remastered image. Also, I absolutely love that Samsung offers pro video and pro camera mode within their official camera application. This lets you change so many things, including the shutter speed, ISO, white balance, and even switch between different mics. Also, the ability to install applications from outside of Play Store is also kind of underrated option that we get on the One UI 5.0. And lastly, features like Samsung Dex that uh, lets you connect it to your TV or your desktop PC 
wirelessly over the air is pretty unique. You can literally turn your phone into a full laptop experience. Overall, I think both are amazing and they're in a stage where they are both so feature rich. But above everything, they need to have the core fundamentals right and they do that very well. But Samsung needs to improve their animations, which hopefully with final release of One UI 5.0, we can definitely expect that to happen. I would love to see some more true multitasking as well as a proper theme engine on future iOS update, possibly with iOS 17 or iOS 18. You know how Apple is slow at doing certain things, but I absolutely love the way they have done their lock screen. And in my opinion, it's better than the lock screen of the One UI 5.0. But yeah, let me know what you think about this full comparison between the Samsung One UI 5.0 and the iOS 16 in 2022. Which one is your favorite? Drop a comment. And if you guys are new here, be sure to subscribe. With that being said, I'll see you guys later.